get down that narrow way. I'm going to have to set down something that my flesh is crying out for. But I know that's the way that leads to life. But the whole time my flesh is crying out, that way goes the same way. And it's quicker. And it's easier. And look at all those people who are taking it, and they look like they're blessed. And we look around, well, they're doing it. I mean, he's shouting the victory. And they're doing it. They, they look saved. And all the ones going down that narrow way, they look pretty sad. And our flesh, it cries out for it. And if we're not careful, people will whisper in your ear, oh, I wouldn't do that. Or, you know what happened to the last one who went that way? And we got to make it up in our mind that even though it looks good, again, this is the same thing going back to that garden. But that fruit, it looked good to eat. It was desirable to make one wise. It was good for food. We're talking about that lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. It's been the same struggle since Genesis. And we're still struggling with it. That job, it looks good. The money's good. I even like how they treat people who have that job. You know, it makes me feel a little way about myself. Only problem is, they want me there on church nights. And sometimes, we, well, I know I, again, make application, good at rationalizing things. But, 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 but the word said, no good thing will eat with old walk up right before him. Blessed of the Lord, make it rich, and no sorrow with it. And we start abusing that word and squeezing it to make it fit what my flesh wants to do. And you got preachers who will be happy if you sow a seed to tell you the same thing. The Lord wants you to have that job. The Lord wants you to have this. He wants you to have that. Now think about Samson. Where Samson had the anointing on him, but he wanted Delilah too. And he thought he could have both. Saints, we have to come to a realization that you just can't have both. I mean, it sounds simple, but we, a lot of us, we're still chasing both. Where I want to be on the Lord's side, but I want that stuff in the world too. Whatever it is, I don't know. I don't know what tickles your fancy. But we gotta learn how to lay some things down. We gotta learn how to deny ourselves. And self-preservation built into us deeply. Like I heard it said that you can't bite off your own finger. But your mouth will not let you bite off your finger. You can try. Please don't try. <laughs> but that, that self-preservation, when I start to bite down and it hurts, I'm going to let go because I'm hurting. And in the same way, we let that color how we walk with the Lord. Where I go for it a little ways, oh, that hurts. Oh, I felt that. Oh, I missed that thing that I had to let down. And we go back to it because we're trying to preserve ourselves. Jesus said in one place, he that will save his life shall lose it. But he that shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall find it. It's not natural for me to kill this. It's not natural for me to mortify the deeds of my flesh. I need the Holy Ghost to do this. I need power from the Lord to kill this. Because this is trying to take me to the lake of fire. Oftentimes we don't say it in 
such stark terms, but this is trying to kill me. This is crying out for the exact thing that's going to take me away from the Lord. And this flesh is of the earth. The desires of the earth, they speak to this thing natively. When those lusts speak out, there's no interpretation. There's no rightly dividing for this flesh. The flesh knows exactly what we're talking about. But when that thing of the spirit comes, well, well now I gotta study that. <laughs> now, what, was, was that the original translation? <laughs> and I mean, yes, sir. What you said just reminded me of that even in the law, one of the only lawful times you can kill someone is if they're trying to kill you. Mm -hmm. So it's all down to kill or be killed. Mm -hmm. Self defense. Mm -hmm. And we don't look at it from that point of view. But only one can live. Mm -hmm. So that's like you said, that's you gotta kill him before he can kill you. Absolutely. This flesh wants to drag you to the lake of fire. And the problem that I have, again, make application is, the Lord is steadily trying to save me, and I find myself fighting against him. I think about, I think his name was, I don't know, who was the, the prophet who was beating the donkey who was trying to keep him from going up the road. Yeah. Balaam, I think his name was. And that donkey, he saw the danger. There was an angel in the road with a sword drawn, ready to take his head off. And here he is, beating this donkey half to death, trying to go to destruction. And if we're not careful, we find ourselves doing the same thing. Where the, look, the word comes and it finds us. And it means us good. And somehow I get mad. When the Lord's just trying to save me. But because they didn't have to frame it like that. They never got anything good to say. Sometimes, you know, I hear people get angry when the pastor says you're not saved. I mean, if you're not saved, you're saved. If you were saved, he wasn't talking to you. I mean, there's no sense in when you, if you're wrong, taking correction. But because that pride rises up, and oh, he can't tell me if I'm saved. That's between me and Jesus. I guess you'll find out when the flames start making <laughs> If the Lord's not first. But let's let the Lord save us. <laughs> Jesus said in one place, he said to Saul, then he said, it's hard for you to kick against the priests. And uh, another thing is, we don't want to have to have the Lord knock us down and blind us to save us. And we can go willing. I'm running out of time. I was thinking about how oftentimes we're too in love with ourselves. Where because of that self-preservation, because of my pride, because I love myself so much, now I can't suffer wrong. Because, you know, of this pride, and it's a killer. When someone slaps me across the face, I can't turn the other cheek like the scripture said. Because now, I'm going to look like a punk. And I think another thing that's a struggle in the saint of God's life is because Jesus said your ways aren't my ways, following the Lord will have you looking silly. And because we don't want to look silly, in front of others, we can find ourselves on the way to destruction. I remember vividly being in the church, knowing I was wrong, and not wanting to come up to the altar because people would see me. 
Because what would they think? And it's that pride, and the same way with the flesh, that pride will take you to the lake of fire if you let it. Saints, we got to lay that pride down daily. Uh, let's look at 1 Peter 2, 18. Probably something will bring it in. First Peter 2 18 it says servants be subject to your masters with all fear not only to the good and gentle but also to the fraud for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endured grief suffering wrongly. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults ye shall take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer for it ye take it patiently this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. This scripture is calling out suffering wrong. When someone is blatantly wrong and I could defend myself not defending myself. Thinking about Isaiah 53, it says he is I think it says, brought as a lamb unto the slaughter. And as the sheep before our shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Now, you know, if I was wrong and I got to suffer for that, well, I mean, I would prefer not to, but amen. But when you do good and you write and you still got to suffer, this word is saying, the Lord is pleased when you take that. myself 
but thinking about beating you like you stole something. <laughs> and that scripture comes back, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And that's more than a thing we say at the end of prayer. That's a lifestyle. Where this mind, it, it can get off into some terrible things. But we got to bring that thing into subjection because we want to please the Lord. Coming to a close. I wanted to talk about looking ahead, that joy that's set before us. Romans 8.18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. That's if we continue to the end. That's if we walk pleasingly. Because that previous one just said that you're not going to get the reward except you strive off it. Now, if you're cheating, you're taking shortcuts, don't expect it. But if we strive lawfully, we have everything ahead of us to gain. Thanks be encouraged, the Lord will help us. The Lord will strengthen us. This, this enduring is a hard thing, and oftentimes we haven't been doing it. But if we can start today, and it doesn't have to be some grand gesture, just where you would have cut up otherwise, let the Lord have his way, and practice that thing and until it becomes part of you. And the Lord's going to take us all the way if we'll let him. You're not going to go astray following Jesus. But we got to be sensitive to his voice. We got to know his voice over my voice telling me what I want to hear. We got to know his voice over the voice of the enemy. No, the enemy will not tell you fast. The enemy will not tell you to forgive your brother. Don't no, no, throw that off on the enemy. But if we can get in this word, if we can be serious about it, the Lord wants to say this. Yeah. Follow the will, man. Pray for me, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah.